Today we talk about chemical pregnancies, what they are and what they mean. I'm Dr. Mark Amos, and this is Taco About Fertility Tuesday. Maybe you or one of your friends have had a chemical pregnancy. The question is, what is it? I've had patients think it means they're not even pregnant. I've had patients think it means they're never going to get pregnant. Well, in this podcast, I want to talk about what it is, what does it mean, and does it offer any hope? In the end, if you had a chemical pregnancy, it means you didn't come away with a baby. And no matter what, that's always bad. But understanding what a chemical pregnancy is may bring some hope to your quest once you determine what it means. So let's first start by defining what it means. A chemical pregnancy is a pregnancy. It's not a special term for, oh, it wasn't really a pregnancy or it was never going to be a pregnancy. Absolutely not. What a chemical pregnancy means is all pregnancies before they can be seen on the ultrasound, are chemical, meaning biochemical. When people talk about chemical pregnancy, what they're usually saying is is that they had a pregnancy that unfortunately miscarried or stopped growing, but was only seen with chemical evidence and no ultrasonic evidence. For example, HCG. When you see HCG rising, at that point is chemical evidence of a pregnancy. When you can see the pregnancy in a uterus on the ultrasound, you now have ultrasonic evidence of the pregnancy. So a chemical pregnancy just means you can only see the pregnancy through chemicals. So does this mean that the embryo didn't implant in the IVF cycle or that the embryo was just floating around? Well, no. Matter of fact, it absolutely means it implanted because the only way to make HCG after an IVF transfer, is when the syncytiotrophoblasts invade the placenta. At that point, they start making HCG. So anytime you see HCG rise, even if it's a very low number, you can at least walk away saying, okay, the embryo implanted. Now, it's important to understand it doesn't mean it implanted in the right spot. It could have implanted in the tube, like an ectopic, but it did implant somewhere. The most important part I want you to get from that is that you were pregnant and it did implant. This is extremely useful to know because if you don't have implantation, then you start getting worried about other things going on. Was the embryo even alive when they put it in? Did it die shortly afterwards? Is there something wrong with you where it never implanted? But once you see a chemical pregnancy, you can at least say, I know the embryo implanted and I was pregnant. So then the next question comes up is, What would cause a chemical pregnancy? Why would it not keep moving forward? So it's first important to understand that having a chemical pregnancy does not mean you have issues. Sometimes things don't work. That could be because when the cells were dividing, something went wrong. There could be little bleeds that can cause problems and people can lose pregnancies very early. But it doesn't mean you're going to keep having problems. However, there are some people who do keep having chemical pregnancies and never get to that birth. And in those situations, we do need to look into them a little further. So the question is, what can cause those? When we see that, there could still be an issue with implantation, even though it implanted. And one of the first things I said is it could be implanted in the wrong spot. So for example, if implanted in the tube or implanted in the cervix, you can see how it may start to grow, but then can no longer continue because it's not in the natural spot it should be. One of the other possible causes could be something wrong with the embryo, meaning it was struggling in the beginning, which is why it was just a chemical pregnancy and never ended up growing like it should have. That could be due to cellular division problems or could even be due to DNA issues with the embryo. Now in IVF, if the embryo was euploid, meaning genetically normal, it's not likely going to be a chromosomal issue. And then we start thinking about a thing called an ERA, endometrial receptivity assessment test. Sometimes there can be timing issues. And so we'll see in the implantation it occurs, but it's unusual 
where the HCG rises very slowly and then comes back down. Now, although it's beyond this podcast, I have noticed that when you look at the HCG levels between days 5, 7, and 10, it tells a story, and that story may be able to help you with your next transfer. Now, I'm not saying you need to have your blood drawn day 5 and 7, but what I'm saying is if you did do pregnancy tests at home and you saw them getting darker, or if you did blood draws, that may be useful if it doesn't work to figure out why. With an ERA test, the timing may be more corrected, and at that point, a successful pregnancy. One of the toughest things about a chemical pregnancy is, although it does give us some hope that things have been planted, it's also very discouraging. To go through all that and just get a chemical evidence of a pregnancy could be demoralizing. And if you listen to my other podcast, you know that nothing you did caused it not to work. I think that's really important to know. And Although it's hard to see the positive in at least a positive pregnancy test, it's important to know that a chemical pregnancy does not mean you're never going to get pregnant. But it is important when you keep having chemical pregnancies to look into it further. There could even be issues with the uterus, where the lining of the uterus is having problems, such as people who have Asherman syndrome. In the end, one chemical pregnancy, nothing to be concerned about. A second chemical pregnancy, especially with a euploid embryo, at that point, you need to start working things up. What I can tell you is, for most of my patients who have had chemical pregnancies, they have gone on to have successful live births. There are only a couple patients I can think of that ever had chemical pregnancies and kept trying and didn't get pregnant. One of them was a very extreme situation where they had a issue where their body was attacking the embryo in the uterus and they were continuously getting miscarriages earlier and earlier and earlier. They had over seven chemical pregnancy miscarriages. At that point, we did get an immunologist involved and they were given the option of using certain treatments or using a surrogate. They decided to move on with the surrogate. Please understand that's an extremely rare situation. For most people, That's never the issue. I find with most of my patients, when there's a chemical pregnancy, we make the adjustments needed and then having a successful live birth. If you're facing this situation where you did an IVF transfer and had a chemical pregnancy, keep your head up. Chances are you're going to come away with a live birth next time. If you're one of those patients who had multiple chemical pregnancies, well, then make sure your doctor has at least done some work up to figure out what's going on. In the end, you still have a very high chance of coming away with a live birth. Just keep sticking with it and don't give up. You are so close. In summary, a chemical pregnancy is a pregnancy. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. You were pregnant. And although it's unfortunate that the pregnancy never went to a live birth, there is information that was gathered here. Information that says you got pregnant, which means you can do this. The second thing tells us an implanted, which means although there still can be an issue with implantation, we know it's implanting. Using this information and discussion with your doctors, you should be able to make whatever adjustments are needed to move forward and have success. As I stated, there are only a few patients that I've ever had that had chemical pregnancies and continued and did not go on to have a live birth. It is extremely rare and you should feel confident that if you've had at least a chemical pregnancy, you're probably going to come away with a live birth at some point. Hopefully this was helpful to someone if they've gone through this, maybe you've had a friend go through this, it'd be great to let them know about this. Chemical pregnancies are defeating. It's like being told it worked, but it didn't work. In the end, no one's trying to get a chemical pregnancy. Everyone's trying to have a baby. But the purpose of this podcast was to let people know that it is a silver lining that there means they will get pregnant and they'll probably have a live birth. If you enjoyed this episode, please tell people about us and give us a five-star review on your favorite medium. As always, I look forward to talking to you next week on Talk About Fertility Tuesday.